I'm going to turn everything. I'm going to turn everything over to Nick. And Nick, you're mute. There you go. Hey, I, I got a <laughs> way to way to start it off here. Um, yeah. So thanks, Ann. Uh, as Ann said, I am the local East Bay Westlaw representative. Um, and when you think of Westlaw, you typically think of cases, statutes, which is you know the law. Um, for transactional attorneys, that's great and all, but it's really how you apply that law to your you know, daily workflow that is of value. So that's the whole point of the practical law tool. It takes that primary law, those primary law resources, um, and then it basically makes them digestible uh, for practice areas that you're familiar with or even new practice areas that you might be diving into in the transactional um, sense. So anything from like real estate, tax, you know, you, you name it, where you don't really need to rely on that primary law, but just, you know, applying it to give your clients, you know, good outcomes with, with you know, the, the documentation that you make for them. Um, so with that, we really want to show you the tool, how to, you know, access it, um, the meat and potatoes of it, where it comes from, the thought behind it. Uh, so with that, I have Brian Overson, who is a colleague who is a sales specialist for practical law that I've worked with for numerous years. Um, I will have him, you know, give a brief introduction of the tool, um, and then we will have another colleague named Andrew who will demo it uh, and and really show you how to how to utilize it in a, in your daily uh, work. Yeah, thank you, Nick, and thank you, Ann. Appreciate uh, everyone joining us today. Again, I'm Brian Overson, Practical Law Sales Specialist here at Thomson Reuters. Uh, I've been with the company for um, coming up on four years now, so. Um, a little bit of a background on practical law. Practical law started out in the United Kingdom in 1990 as a magazine, uh, a magazine subscription um, specifically for transactional attorneys. Uh, Thomson Reuters purchased it in 2013. Um, it is Thomson Reuters legal know-how tool. Again, it's specifically designed for transactional attorneys. We do have a, a couple sections on the litigation side of things, including uh, federal civil practice as well as commercial litigation. Uh, the latter of which we introduced uh, as a um, sort of a reaction to the COVID-19 and coronavirus, um, you know, uh, issue, we'll call it. Um, and uh, as a reminder, um, practical law, more than just a legal know-how tool, it is, uh, you know, a form bank, yes, um, and it, it does have know-how, but there's a lot of really cool sort of interactive features that kind of separate us from some other providers in the industry and, and some other tools that you may have seen in the past. Um, I, I kind of want to get started here. And if, if the folks on the call wouldn't mind, just type in um, in the chat feature within Zoom, uh, what practice areas you're currently practicing in. And then also, if you wouldn't mind typing in um, some practice areas that you, you would potentially like to get into if you you had the resources that you need, uh, that you needed, excuse me, um, to practice if there's some practice areas that might interest you that you don't have as much familiarity with working in. Um, we will also have the chat open uh, throughout the uh, duration of the, the navigation, the demonstration, which will be given by my colleague, Andrew Dugan. So feel free to chat in your questions throughout. I think we have about 15 folks on the call today. Um, so we should be able to, you know, make this interactive and, and have Andrew give his spiel, but then also uh, make sure that we're answering questions uh, along the way. Um, so with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to Andrew, um, and uh, he can dive into, into navigation. Thanks, Brian. Cool. And Andrew, so you know, uh, a couple of the things that have popped up in the chat as far as practice areas, um, we have some estate planning, um, corporate work, business transactional, um, real property issues, uh, business you know, some areas like that. So we can kind of focus on, on those. And then if there's anything else that comes up throughout the call, you know, just uh, chat it in any questions and we can address it either during the call or, or toward the end. Great. Thanks, Nick. And as we get questions and I'll, I'll read them off to you, Andrew. So I know you got, you're going to be doing the demo. So I'll, uh, I'll make it easy on you and I'll pay attention here. That sounds perfect. Thank you very much, Brian. And thank you everyone for joining today. And hopefully you can see my screen right now on the Practical Law Connect homepage. Uh, if not, please just uh, chat in and we can resolve that. Um, but hopefully you can see the screen and you can see that it's arranged by practice areas, which is why we started out asking about the practice areas as that's the uh, hierarchy or arrangement of the site. 
And I heard a few different ones, trust in estates, general business, real estate. Uh, so let's just start with trust in estates uh, as our example practice area. And of course we can go into a few different ones, uh, but just at the outset, all the practice areas are going to be formatted or laid out in the same manner. So uh, if you've seen one, you've seen them all, basically uh, they're all going to have you know, various topics once you click on it that you can use to, to browse to the content you're looking for. Uh, so hopefully the uniform navigation across practice areas will make it a little bit easier. And as I said, let's dive right in. So I'm just going to click on the trust and estates area. And as I mentioned, uh, there is going to be a hierarchy of subtopics for each practice area. And you're going to see that on the left-hand side over here. And what that entails is you have some high level topics. So I'm interested in wills, I'm interested in trusts, and you can certainly you know, click on one of those and it will bring up the practical law content pertaining to trusts. Um, but each one has a little arrow next to it as well. Uh, so if you had something more specific, you can use these arrows to drill down to a more granular level. So if you only want to look at revocable trusts or revocable trusts for married couples only, uh, you can see here it has subtopics and there may also be multiple levels here. Uh, so there may be one arrow and then there may be another arrow that expands even further. Uh, so a few different ways to do it. You can be as general or as specific as you want here. And once you click on your topic here, let's do global trust for married couples. Uh, you're going to see the first thing that pops up is the practical law know-how box. Uh, so know how, meaning rather than the primary law research where you had a specific case, specific statute that you were looking up for researching, uh, the know how materials are going to be things like uh, practice notes that you see right here. Uh, practice notes are the general guides or overviews to a subject. Uh, you'll also see standard documents, which are the templates or forms that Brian mentioned at the beginning. Uh, so you have the guidance in the practice notes, you have the drafting tools in the standard documents or forms. And then you'll see there's also some toolkits here. And toolkits are almost an index to a subject. So if you know, this looks right on point, you can click there and it will just link you to everything else on that specific topic. So a few different types of resources you'll see. And the other important point here is these are just the eight most popular or eight uh, that the practical law uh, editors have selected to be on the front page. This is not everything on vocable trusts. If you look down here, there's a link that says view all and you can see there's about 300 resources altogether. Uh, so it's meant to be um, the process of picking a topic and then hopefully they've selected the, the one you're looking for to be right on the front page. But if not, uh, you can always click through to view all. And then you'll see next to it, there's also a state specific link. So you would just set your state one time and then next to the view all, it will show just the California specific resources. So you can see here, this one, revocable trust toolkit, uh, is labeled national federal. That just means it's meant to be general or jurisdictionally neutral. Uh, it may mention specific things about individual states within the guide, but it's meant to apply to everyone. Uh, and then there are also state specific resources. So these are only pertaining to California. Uh, so depending on your needs, you can click on either one of those. View all links to see all the practical law materials that apply. And if there are no questions about that, I'm just gonna click on the view all national. And once you do that, it's going to show you all 300 resources on this specific topic. And you can see here it's showing all states. So you have absolutely everything available here, California, and national and otherwise. 
And you also have filters on the left-hand side that will let you narrow down the list. Uh, so if I only wanted to see, for instance, the national and the California, or maybe I had a couple of different states, uh, there is a jurisdiction filter here. Uh, so I can just pick whatever you know, states apply. Uh, maybe I want to add Florida, or let's do something closer, Oregon, something like that. Uh, so you can pick and choose your states here, and then we just apply it, and that will filter out all the New York and Texas and Florida and things like that, and just leave, leave, leave you with the national and the states that you selected. And the other filter you have here is by resource type. And these are the things I just mentioned. So the practice notes, if you're looking for the, the guidance, standard documents or standard clauses, if you're looking for language or templates, and um, then you get into the other things, checklists and toolkits that we'll also take a look at. Uh, so if you knew you just wanted to go straight to the templates and skip the guides, you know, you can just check one of those and, and hit apply in the same way I did with the states. Uh, but just to show you how it looks at the beginning here, uh, it's always going to have the practice notes first, and then it will get into the standard documents and standard clauses. Uh, so let's start by just looking at a practice note. And when I click into a practice note, you're going to notice a table of contents on the left-hand side. So if the topic or title wasn't fully explanatory or uh, left you with some questions about what's in the guide, you can always take a look at the table of contents over here and it will show you exactly what they're covering. Uh, maybe you wanted just trust for pets. You didn't know if it was gonna be included in here. Well, it is. Uh, so you can use this to jump to that section or just use it as a preview to see if it's covering everything. And the other thing you'll notice is it says maintained in green at the top here. And the vast majority of the resources are going to say maintained like this one. And anything that says maintain simply means that the practical law attorney editors that drafted this guide are also constantly monitoring the news, court decisions, et cetera, for any changes, proposed rules, rule changes, things like that. Uh, anything that would change the information in the guide. And if there are any major changes like those, they would update this guide within 48 hours usually within 24, we say 24 to 48. So long story short, maintained means as up-to-date as humanly possible. And if there's not a maintained label, it will have a date there that will let you know exactly uh, the last time it was kept. And as far as the guide itself goes, they are meant to be written in plain English relatively plain English, but not meant to be uh, an academic treatise or paper on the subject or you know, get you deep into the weeds, it's meant to give you all of the pertinent information without uh, you know, being a, a 400 page document. And as you go through, uh, because it is giving you uh, the uh, general gist of, of some things, it will also link you to other places. So here, for example, it will say, uh, you know, briefly touch on something and then say for more information, you can also see this comparison chart or this other practice note for our Q&A section. Uh, so it may link you to some practical law resources that are similar. And then it may also link you to statute sections, code sections, court decisions, and such like that. And here, if I do click on anything primary law, uh, you'll see here it says document by Westlaw, and it may have some familiar Westlaw menus and key side and things like that. Uh, so what it did was go out to Westlaw to pull you know, this from the annotated California code uh, so that you can view it. And any practical law subscriber would have access to this, even if it wasn't in their Westlaw plan, uh, because it's linked from practical law practice note. So anything that you encounter 
primary law wise in a guide, in a form, in a checklist, any of the things we've talked about, uh, you will have access to that even if it's outside of your Westlaw plan. Uh, so you shouldn't encounter any warning screens or anything like that for all those things. They're considered part of the guide itself. And if the guide looks helpful here, of course you can, uh, on the right-hand side over here, uh, email it to yourself, you can print it, you can download it. And very simple, just click email and then choose whether you'd like Word or PDF in email, and then the document is yours. You can save it to your desktop for future reference or send it on, whatever you'd like to do. And because this is a maintained resource, uh, there's one other thing I'd like to mention. Uh, down below the print options here at the bottom, there's a bell icon, and that will allow you to create a document alert for this guide. And you can set up an alert for a guide, a form, a checklist, all the different resources. And if it's maintained and the attorney editor is making any changes to it and you have an alert set up, it'll simply be emailed and it will let you know exactly what changed in the guide. So it's a nice, easy, simple way of keeping on top of a certain subject without doing all that legwork yourself. Uh, so unlike the practical law editors who have, you know, the whole morning or three hours every morning to check for updates and read all the news and things like that. Uh, you may not have that luxury. Uh, so uh, for any and all the topics that you may be interested in, you can set up that alert, uh, just get some easy current awareness that way. And that's it for the printing options. And then at the bottom of every guide, you will see some related content here. Uh, so your next step may be right at the bottom. So rather than going back and looking through our list again, uh, maybe you came here, you were reading about revocable trust, then you were ready to draft one. You can see here we have the related standard documents. So I could jump right into the uh, actual form here uh, without having to do any additional digging or uh, searching around. And yeah, if there's no questions about the practice notes, I can jump into one of the standard documents and we can take a look at one of those. Brian, any uh, questions in the chat? Sorry about that, I had myself on mute. No, nothing yet. Okay, good. Uh, so let's jump right from here to Standard document. And standard document is going to be similar. We'll say maintained if it's being maintained. Short synopsis and italics at the top. And then here is the form itself. So if you're looking for you know any type of agreement, I know we're in trust and estates right now, but uh, if you're in general business and you want LLC operating agreements, where you need bylaws or things like that. Um, all going to work the same way. Uh, you have the uh, contract or agreement itself that you can see on the screen here. And you can, again, email, print it, or download it. But for the standard document specifically, uh, there's a little W, which is our open in Word button. Uh, since it's a form, we're assuming you're going to want to work with it in Word. So this is the easiest way to get it. Click the open in Word button and it will automatically download it to your desktop and then you can just open it very quickly and start drafting media. And this will give you the you know a clean, well formatted copy if you're doing litigation or just regular contracts. Uh, all the formatting, they're very sensitive to that. So you shouldn't really need to uh, make any changes other than you know, filling out your open issues or, or bracketed items here. And once you have this form, again, it's yours to use if you're a practical law subscriber. So uh, there's no copyright restrictions. Uh, you can change this, use it the way it is, uh, however you like to use it. And then back on the screen here, I do want to point out that uh, we do have some additional guidance that's embedded right within the 
form or the standard document here. So as you'll see uh, throughout the document, as I scroll, there are these little notes. So for each section, if you had questions or need a little bit of guidance specifically on that section, uh, without leaving the agreement here, I can open this up, get some guidance, get some links back to the primary law if I need to refer to that. And uh, may also suggest some more in-depth practice notes that will help you fill out that section. So just trying to give you all the resources um, right on the, the same screen here. So you're not switching back and forth between practice notes or checklists and uh, the, the document just has it embedded right here. And because you have the, the form itself and all of these notes, um, if you do choose either email, print or download, you will have a choice here to make just the plain document, which is just like we looked at here on the Word version. So that would be the, the document, uh, or you can do the reading view, which will be the form plus all of those uh, helpful drafting notes. So you can download either one. Uh, a lot of people we hear uh, do both, especially if you have two computer screens, you can have one on one, one on the other. Uh, so just wanted to point out that you do have that, that extra option there with the standard documents. And you also have the alert for this. So uh, I would just say, if you do download this and you start using it as your uh, base agreement, Definitely good to set up an alert that way. Uh, if you're just opening it off your computer every time and working with it that way, uh, you may not know of any changes. So uh, if you do set up the alert, uh, you'll know if there are any changes and you can go and, and download a fresh version. And I think that is it for the standard documents. Any questions about those? All right, good. Uh, so I'm just gonna go back to our list here. So uh, we can actually start at the beginning again. Uh, this time we can do our startups and small businesses practice area. And you can see this one's called a cross practice collection, meaning it's called the practice area. Most people, if you ask them their practice area, they don't say small business. Uh, so it's more one that was devised by the practical law editors that pulls from various of the other practice areas. So you'll have some real estate, some labor, some corporate M&A, uh, all put together if it pertains to a, a small business. And if I click in there, again, I want to be the same way. You'll have your task-based menu on the left-hand side. So if I was starting a new business, I could just click on that, or I could click on forming the entity, uh, or if you already knew the structure you wanted or entity type, uh, you can always go straight to that. Uh, so that's an example of the ones with the, the multiple levels there. Uh, and here uh, you'll see same as before. Here's all our practical know-how know or the, the top selections, and then we can click on view all again to see everything. And so you'll have your practice notes first, and then if you scroll past those, you can get into your standard documents. But again, you do have your type filter. So we already did look at a practice note and a standard document. Uh, standard clauses, fairly self-explanatory, just individual clause language that you can use in conjunction with the, the standard documents or with the, you know, your own document. Uh, maybe you have uh, California bylaws that you love already, don't want to change. Uh, that's great. You might want to add one particular clause to it, though. So uh, that's the idea of the standard clauses. Uh, and the only ones we haven't taken a look at yet are the checklists and the toolkits. So let's do a checklist first. Uh, so the checklists are also going to be uh, the, the guidance type of materials but this time it will be in a graphical format of some kind. So it may just be a bullet point list, uh, maybe a graph, maybe a flowchart if it's a process. So you are gonna get some 
guidance and, and links at the top here. Uh, but here you can just see if you're doing this, here's all the individual steps that you need to do. So it's just more of a step-by-step -step version uh, of the, the practice notes. And as I said, if it's something uh, where there's some kind of comparison going on, then you'll usually see a, a chart. So we'll just have the same type of guidance, but just side-by-side -side chart format. And if there's no questions about the checklist, we can also take a look at a toolkit. Uh, so toolkit here, let's say it was forming an LLC and I saw an LLC formation toolkit. That would be a good place to go because this will give you links to absolutely everything for California LLCs on one page. So very brief summary at the top. And then, as I said at the beginning, just similar to an index, here's all the practice notes on this topic. Here are all the forms that you can download. Here are all the checklists. Uh, so rather than you know, browsing through all those menus, it is pretty easy. Uh, but if you see a, a checklist pop up, that's a good place to, to jump in right away because you'll just have this comprehensive list of, of everything for that topic. And those are all of the resource types. I'll just pause again and see if anyone has any questions about any of those or the printing or anything else we've covered so far. Okay, not hearing any questions. So I'm just gonna go back to the beginning again. So we'll do one more time. Let's do real estate this time. And Andrew, uh, we do have a question from Svetlana. Um, would you please compare a state planning section of Westlaw with the state planning software platforms um, such as Wealth Council for uh, Logic? And this question uh, I would uh, imagine would be relevant both to you, Andrew, and to, to Nick, anything that you guys can add on that? Uh, yes, yeah, so um, just to caveat, I've never used Wealth Council. I have had um, many folks mention it and, and give me the general description, but I haven't used it per se. Uh, but uh, the, the big difference is going to be that, so both of these are going to have forms, right? I don't know if Wealth Council has the, the same type of guides as the practice notes, but in any case, uh, all of the uh, practical materials, as I mentioned, are written in-house, uh, and all of our attorneys, as you may have seen on that initial uh, page we had up, uh, have 12, 15 years of experience uh, before they come to us, so very, very highly vetted uh, as far as becoming a, uh, an attorney editor. And then also the maintained uh, is what I get a lot with uh, folks that mentioned the Wealth Council, for example. Uh, not sure how often those forms are going to be updated or even if they're labeled uh, as to when they're updated. Uh, whereas these, as long as it has that maintain label, you can be absolutely sure that it's fully up to date. So those are the, the two key things that folks have mentioned to me, but again, I don't have personal experience with those other uh, tool sets, so I can't talk too much to them. Uh, yeah. And then on the Westlaw, this is, this is uh, Westlaw has to so kick back know. to Sorry, Andrew. Um, so my understanding of Wealth Council, um, as far as like the estate planning, is that it's going to be buildable forms. So you would basically insert uh, some client information and things like that. Um, so within practical law, um, this is more of the know-how tool with some, you know, standard documents and templates that you can utilize. So it's so you're able to get a little bit more specific when it comes to areas or just have um, really, you know, on point documents for some of those more basic things you might run into. Um, with some of those buildable platforms, it's going to be fairly, you know, boilerplate instances that you would build um, out forms, you would answer questions and build from there. Um, we do have uh, like an estate planning thing within Westlaw that is geared to that. It's called our form builder. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, uh, we do have similar products to that. Um, but when it comes to practical odds, it's a lot more of the know-how um, with some of those templates. But as far as the actual 
um, inserting and, and updating and drafting the actual tool. Um, there is some functionality within practical law, which uh, Andrew can go into with uh, automated documents. Um, but as far as like the, the estate planning and stuff like that, that would be a, a form builder tool, which is also housed within, within Westfall and would be comparable to those, to those other ones. And sort of on that topic, if I jump into trust and estates again, since we're on that, uh, so far we've been looking just at the, the practical law and know-how here. So if I did come and I clicked on wills or I clicked on trusts, uh, so far we've just been looking at the, the practical law know-how piece that pops up at the top here. Uh, what I haven't done is scroll down yet. So once you pick a topic, if you scroll past the practical law materials, uh, you'll also see some secondary sources from Westlaw that have been curated by the attorney editors and deemed to be helpful resources that belong on the front page here. So this can save you a lot of research too and connect you to other forms. So there may be standard forms that are in a, a treatise or something like that that you're comfortable with. Um, those will be linked right here. And these are, uh, as I said, the ones the editor shows to be on the, the front page of the subject here, but you can also click on view all and see all of the Westlaw secondary sources. And needless to say, there's a lot of them. Uh, so I'm not gonna scroll through this whole thing, uh, but you can see if you wanted to go to the rudder guide and those are usually uh, tend to, to float to the front there uh, or things like that. You also have access to those in addition to the practical law author materials. So that's how all the, the topics will go, regardless of practice area, practical law materials at the top, and then links to the secondary sources below that. And you may have some additional, uh, there may be another widget or box here for forms, uh, where that will show you some additional forms. Uh, so you do have the, the practical law at the top and then some additional ancillary materials below. And, oh, Nick, you also mentioned uh, the automated or fillable forms. So we can certainly take a look. So what I did here is go back to the home page and just scroll past the practice areas here. And you have a list of popular tools. And we'll get back to what's market, but we'll show the automated documents since there was a question about it. So we already took a look at a standard document and uh, you know, those are great and relatively easy to fill out, as I mentioned, very well formatted and things like that. So easy to use, but you may uh, have some high volume documents that you do a lot. Uh, so just as an example, I'm gonna choose the California bylaws here. And you can see that brought me to the same type of standard document as we looked at before. Here's the form. Uh, you can download it in Word. You can read the helpful notes. Uh, but anything you browse to that has this blue box at the top that says automated document uh, means it's enabled for that feature. So you can just click on start drafting and it will take that exact same document we were just looking at. So still the one that's authored by the, the practical law editors still has all of the drafting notes or help included. Uh, but this time, instead of just manually filling out the bracketed items, I'll just answer a questionnaire format and it will dynamically fill out the document as I go. So I can say corporation is called ABC Corp. And you know, it will fill it out there as well as everywhere else throughout the document. So a little bit faster there. And then just a series of questions in or out of California, say yes or no. Uh, but you'll see right below here, uh, there's a little link that says show added text. So if I said yes, uh, it's going to preview the language that's going to insert if you answer a certain way to the question. Uh, so we'll add whole clauses in some cases, uh, depending on what you answer. Uh, and so yeah, just makes it very easy to go through answer some yes or no questions here, and it will 
fill out the language, insert new language if necessary. And then once you're done, you can just save it and it will incorporate all your answers. It will take out the drafting notes so that you have a clean copy at that point. And then you just download it and you have a regular Word document at that point, uh, just one that was a little faster and easier to come up with. And yeah, I'll pause to see if there's any questions about the automated documents. I'm not seeing anything yet. And I'm just going to go back here. Uh, and I mentioned earlier that you have the uh, related info at the bottom. So if I went to the bottom, I would probably see articles in corporation or something that's related to bylaws. Uh, but you also have that button right here, explore related content. And in addition to just that plain list that we saw earlier, which is still available, uh, you also have this uh, interactive map that you can use uh, to continue your research. Uh, so if I was interested in going from bylaws to other related documents and I click on the map, again, rather than browsing around and clicking on things and going back and forth, uh, here, it's going to show me everything that it thinks is related to bylaws. So as I mentioned, here's some articles, here's some standard clauses, here's a practice note about forming a, a California corporation. Uh, and then I can click on any of these and the map will expand from there. So now my focus is forming a corporation. It's going to show me all of the standard documents, practice notes, maybe I want to get into taxation. Uh, I can see those links there. Uh, so just a, a more interactive way to, to go about it. So I might have started in bylaws and wanted to get to taxation or wanted to get to articles or information about the board, whatever it is. Uh, this is just an easy way to see everything, uh, again, in a graphical format. And as I click through here, uh, it will keep expanding the, the map. Uh, so to prevent you from getting lost down the path here, it will also keep track of everything you've clicked on so far. So if uh, you needed the, the bylaws and the articles and also uh, social media or whatever this one is, uh, click on you know, each thing as you go. And here it will, as I said, keep track of all those. So if you wanted, each and every one of those, I can just say, yes, select all, give me all of those, download them all at one time. Uh, so uh, probably your initial browse will be to a practice area and then a topic. Uh, but once you click on any resource and you wanna see anything related to that, uh, obviously this knowledge map is a, a very uh, easy way to get all those resources just very quickly as you scroll through. And just a reminder of how I got to that. So here, any document, be it a practice node, a standard document, whatever, uh, just click on that explore related content button and then click on explore the map to get that map view instead. And if there's no questions about that, I'm just gonna go back to the homepage again. And I know we don't have time to get into every practice area, but uh, we took a look at some trust and states, some startups. Uh, for all of these, you will notice there are three uh, kind of dots next to each one. If you want to preview the entire hierarchy of topics, uh, you can always click on that and then do it that way rather than clicking through each one. Uh, so sometimes this is faster if I just want to go to uh, straight to you know, construction and then pricing and then unit price. Sometimes that's a, a faster way to go. Uh, so we wanted to point that out as well. And in addition to the practice areas, we also do have uh, some sectors. So if you think of yourself more as a media person or healthcare or, or uh, more from the industry side rather than traditional legal practice areas, uh, you will see some of those down here uh, and also under the collections tab over here. Uh, you'll see all of the different 
sectors that are available. So uh, for anyone that you know calls himself corporate or business, but they really focus on one segment like this, uh, sometimes easier to browse this way. And uh, yeah, so as far as the other tools go, I don't know, we're running a bit short on time. So if I go too fast or any of these, let me know, but I do want to talk about some of the other tools. Uh, the first one here is called What's Market. And the idea behind What's Market is to supplement the standard documents uh, with some real world language uh, that you can view to, to see what's going on, what's market right now. Uh, so for all of these uh, agreements that you see on the page here, uh, if you'd like to see some examples in your client's industry, uh, company size, things like that, uh, that's what the What's Market tool is designed to do. So if I go to commercial agreements, for example, uh, the practical law editors have created a whole database of example commercial agreements. You can see there's almost 5,000 here. And um, of course, we're not making you read through all 5,000. You have a very robust filter set over here. So I can say, uh, I'm only looking for, uh, you know, let's say services agreements. And I only want a certain industry a certain company size, certain deal points. It has to be California governing law. Uh, so you can you know, pick all of these different filters just to narrow down your, your list here, get to the perfect precedent agreement. And then the other nice thing is that the editors, in addition to finding the agreement, judging it as a, a useful precedent, uh, they've also done a summary of each one. So if I was looking for consulting services agreement, and this one looked good, I can click on it. And before delving into the actual agreement, I can tell uh, who the parties were, little description of it, what key deal terms it has. And then if it does look like a good precedent, I can just click on the link. And here's the actual executed agreement that you can use to compare your language to the language that they use. So uh, really a good pairing with the standard documents as you're drafting, you may want to see some examples like that. This is just a quick and easy way to get those. And just as a reminder, that was just right below the practice areas on the homepage uh, under the tools down here. And then I uh, also want to mention the uh, state Q&A comparison and the quick compare tool here. Uh, so click here, on quick compare. And this will let you uh, create a comparison chart on a custom basis on the topic that you select. So you see I made one about data breach laws a couple of days ago, uh, but whatever, practice area or, or subject you're interested in uh, will be basically the same list of practice areas as before. So let's do real estate this time and you'll see different charts you can create. Let's say you want to do taxes. And here, um, maybe I'm fairly familiar with California, but I'm doing something in Arizona or Oregon or whatever it is and I wanted to compare those. Uh, so I can select multiple states here and then hit apply. And I just, in the last one minute, created a comparison chart of transfer taxes, real estate transfer taxes for Arizona and California. And then you'll see it will also link you to the individual practical law resources here. So if I want to know the rate uh, in California, here it is doesn't apply to Arizona. And um, again, if I wanted to click through, get more details, they'll all be linked here. So uh, just a, again, fast way to compare the laws between two states uh, or more states. You can do uh, as many as you'd like uh, in your chart here. And if you don't need it in chart 
format, but you still wanted to do a, a state law comparison, you can just go to the state Q&A link right here. And very similar, you know, just pick your topic that you're interested in, go back to trust again. Uh, so here are our key uh, questions that you might have, uh, that you might need the answers to. And I'll just select all of those. And then same as before, pick my jurisdictions, whatever they are. And rather than giving you a, a comparison chart, so this is just a, a more basic version of the quick compare, but here's the question one. Here's the answer for California with links to the primary law. Here's the answer for Colorado, Connecticut, same idea. Uh, so if you just had a few questions here, what's the minimum age to create a will? It's 18 here, probably 18 everywhere, but uh, you get the idea here, just uh, able to toggle back and forth very quickly and see the answers for each state. And then we also have the matter maps, and you can probably guess what these are going to be about. Uh, so this is going to uh, map out uh, a particular matter. So you have some set ones here. Uh, so you can create a custom one or same as before, I can go to corporate and you know, see the, the standard ones here. So say I'm um, doing a merger here. Uh, this will give you the map view and it may go farther than it's on the screen. So there is a slider for a lot of these, uh, but the idea is to give you each step that you need to do to accomplish this matter. And then each of the subtasks, subtasks below each main task. So uh, obviously this is helpful because everyone can work with this as the template or the, uh, the map to, to work on the matter, but it will also give you practical all links for each step as well. Uh, so if you get to the agreement step and your next step is drafting the agreement, I can click on that and easily view all of the toolkits, standard documents, et cetera, that will help me do this step here. Uh, so nice for collaboration if maybe you have junior attorneys or new additions to the firm may not have done a particular matter 20 times like you've done it. Uh, you can uh, have this map so they know all the tasks that are going to be accomplished and you, know, you can customize these too. Uh, so just wanted to point out the matter maps as well, since I think that was the last one under the tools. Yep. Uh, only other tool here is the Business Law Center. Uh, that is our Edgar search tool. So if you do need to look at uh, SEC filings for any reason, or you find yourself on the SEC's website, uh, you should immediately stop and come back here and use the Business Law Center instead. It's much easier than SEC's website. Uh, and that's integrated right within practical law too. And I think that covered uh, all of the new features, but I do want to click here just to make sure. So we talked about the map, the quick compare, the what's market and the matter map. So I think we did cover all of those. Uh, the only thing that I haven't mentioned, just because the browsing is so easy, uh, is the searching. Uh, so there is a search bar, even though we haven't used it, haven't had any problems getting to any of the resources because you have the, the great task-based menus for each practice area. Uh, but of course you can do a search here. Uh, so whatever it is you're looking for, go back to Trust and Estates again, say I was looking for uh, you know, a certain type of document or whatever, I can type it in there, get some suggestions here. So if I type in pour over, it will say, you know, go to wills and it will be there. Uh, and then a newer feature is you can also uh, type in a, a question in natural language. So I can say, uh, you know, what the heck is a revocable trust or a grant or trust or whatever it is. And you'll have um, individual questions pop up. So I could just click through there.
And sorry, I think my internet may be cocking out right now. There we go. Uh, so because I typed in a question, I'm going to get this kind of summary. So here's the quick answer with the link. So can't get any easier than that. And then it will also show you, here's the practice note on the subject. Here's a income tax part. Here's a revocable trust one we looked at earlier. And then also some related questions. So I'm going to answer your question at the top and then hopefully give you links to your next question right below it. Uh, so you can do either that regular search or you can type in a question like that and then we'll do this um, new view that just came out, uh, I believe yesterday, uh, that gives you the answer right at the top and the links to uh, the more in-depth resources below. And one more note on the searching. Uh, if I go to you know, a practice area first here, uh, it will be labeled right here. So now if I run a search, it's only going to search this one practice area may cut down on the extraneous hits uh, as opposed to searching right from the uh, front page, which will obviously search everything. So uh, if you are going to do a search or ask a question, uh, if you're sure what practice area it's in, uh, I usually click on that practice area first and then do my search just focuses a little bit uh, and makes it easier to go through the, the results page. And I've been talking for a while, so I'll pause again, see if there's any other questions. I know it's a, a lot at once, but uh, if you have any questions, happy to answer. I'm not seeing any questions. Um, uh, if there's any uh, folks here who, who have additional questions that they've been holding on to, we still do have six minutes. Um, I, I do want to leave a couple minutes at the end for Nick to kind of uh, wrap things up. But if there's, uh, again, specific questions that you have or any other specific titles. Maybe you want to look at a, a particular form and see if practical law uh, has it and, and kind of evaluate the quality of it. Um, please, uh, you know, chat them into the, the chat. And we, we do have a few minutes left for questions here. So. Cool. Um, and then a couple things while we're waiting for questions to come in that, that Andrew, I'd like you to kind of touch on. Um, so within practical law, beyond just resources that you have for your customers. Um, there's resources that can actually benefit, you know, the firm that you work for yourself, which in small law, um, a lot of those things are very valuable. So there's some in-house resources. Um, and another thing that I'd like to take a look at too is um, a lot of law firms say like in labor and, and employment, the, the firms will actually go out to like a business um, to do something, maybe like a harassment training. Um, so within practical law, there's also these canned presentations that we have that you can basically update and, and just put your, um, you know, firm's information on it and throw that into a presentation. And it's a huge time saver um, and a great way to really get out in front of, uh, you know, your businesses or, or clients, um, just using labor and employment as an example. Um, so in addition to some of those in-house resources, Andrew, could you pull up, say, just like a, a harassment training PDF so people can kind of see what some of the resources outside of what we've kind of talked about are? Yeah, most definitely. So just to use your example here, I could go to labor and employment. And of course I could pick uh, a topic here, but just for uh, demonstration's sake, let's say sexual harassment. And you see sexual harassment training popped up here. And while Andrew's going to that, uh, one thing I'd like to add, we, we did have a comment here from Gerald Richards uh, saying, first of all, Andrew, that you did a great job on the demonstration and that this resource is very easy to use. Thank you. We try to make it that way, Gerald. Um, we, we use Practical Law used to be a little bit more of a bank of resources. And the last few years, we've certainly focused on adding resources, but uh, an additional uh, point of focus has been organization of those resources, which really shows up in the, the task-based menu and um, some of the additional features uh, that sort of help mirror the workflow under which attorneys operate. Um, one thing I do wanna point out, and Andrew can uh, assist me with this as well, as it relates to navigation, you always do have access uh, once you become a subscriber to our reference attorneys. Uh, there is a, a phone number that you can call 24 7 365. You'll be able to speak to a US based licensed attorney that works for Thompson Reuters full time. 
uh, on any questions that relate to navigating the tool. We also have a chat feature if you're not in the mood to talk and those can be located at the bottom of the screen. Um, but just a short interjection, uh, apologies, Andrew, go ahead with, uh, with, with what you were navigating. No, you read my mind as soon as you were mentioning the, uh, the help. Uh, I was gonna scroll down to the bottom here. So in the footer of every page, you'll have that 1-800 number and literally all the time you can call. Uh, so Brian and I often joke, you know, if you need to call on Christmas morning, Someone will be there, an attorney will be there to, to answer your call uh, and help you either locate the, the resources you're looking for or you know, help you with any technical questions you may have. Uh, so by all means, very, very popular part of the service. So thank you for uh, reminding me. And as far as the uh, presentation materials go, uh, anything labeled presentation materials, as Nick said, is a pre-made PowerPoint presentation, which you can see blurb right here um, that you can download and use much in the same way as we were talking about with the, the standard documents. So why start from the beginning, especially with something as time consuming as a PowerPoint presentation. So here, uh, this one's for supervisors, this one's for non-supervisors. So you may have different flavors or kinds, uh, but the uh, main idea is to get you the slides so that you can spend your time uh, customizing them to your needs rather than starting the whole thing from scratch. So uh, you can see just a cover slide here and space for the date, space for your name. And a question I get a lot, it does have a practical law logo here. Feel free to move that, put the firm's logo on it. Uh, as we said, this is a, a template for your use. So you can use it however you like, uh, but really as simple as downloading the PowerPoint, changing whatever you need to change. And then it's your presentation. If you'd like to give the presentation, charge the client for it. That's another kind of angle that a lot of our customers have asked about and absolutely fine with us. And with these, you'll get not only the slides themselves, but also the actual speaking notes too. So it, it really is a complete presentation. Uh, you can maybe add some, some info here, but uh, most of the, you can see this one's 30 something slides long. So pretty complete uh, presentation here, but as I mentioned, go ahead and, and change it, take parts out, add parts. Uh, once you download it, it's yours to use just like the, the standard documents. And then the other thing that Nick mentioned back on the homepage here. A uh, couple other areas, we do have a business development area down here. And probably could have gone to the presentation materials here, but uh, so uh, the presentation materials for each practice area are listed here. Uh, you also have some business briefings, uh, so media training, how to handle uh, employee mail, data privacy, uh, and then you have some video content down here too. Uh, a lot of people these days uh, more apt to interact with videos rather than the, the written words. So uh, you have a good variety of videos down there. And then here under uh, other resources. I think we took a look at most of these. Uh, only thing we didn't mention is there is a meet the team link. Uh, so I've been talking up the attorney editors and their vast experience and things like that. But if you want to check out the people themselves, of course, you can click on the meet the team link. It will have a bio of each attorney editor. Uh, so you can check out their resume, go and check them out on social media, make sure that it's coming from a good source, but uh, we think you'll be happy with, uh, with everyone there. So uh, keep in mind, we have that there too. And yeah, other than that, uh, Nick and Brian, anything I missed or any other questions from the group? Uh, no questions. And that was very comprehensive. I think uh, we covered everything. I'll turn it over to Nick and allow him to, to kind of wrap things up. I want to be respectful of everyone's time here today. 
Yeah, uh, thanks, Andrew. I won't take up too much time here. Um, so kind of like what we did last year, we did something similar for the new Westlaw platform. Um, if anybody is interested in, you know, getting up and running, we offer 14 day um, unlimited trials. So if we didn't get into an area that you focus on, I, I know like IP was mentioned, um, and you really want to dive into those areas that you're familiar with to see, you know, how the content stacks up, um, we can do that as well. Um, or if you want a trial to really find some areas that you're not that familiar with, but you think you might want to dive into that or have ran into issues uh, previously. So we do offer the trials. Um, and then if you do want to do that, you can basically just reach out to Anne um, and she can forward that my way. As Brian and myself did mention, uh, we will be sending some documentation to Anne as well. So we'll have some practical uh, resources. You can dive into it, even though I think Andrew did a pretty good job here. Um, I'll also include a PDF for that, that form builder, since that is, you know, transactional in nature as well. And, and I think that's a, another valuable resource uh, too. So with that, thank, uh, thank you everybody for, for coming here. Thank Andrew, Brian, and, and Anne, uh, especially for helping set this up. Um, and then, yeah, if, if there's any interest in a trial, reach out to Anne. She can get you in touch with, with me or Brian. Um, and then expect an email from Anne with, with some more of that collateral uh, to, to take a deeper, deeper dive and, and uh, you know, look into maybe some more specific practice areas.